In the past couple of lectures, we've looked at plane waves. We've introduced them as a solution to the Helmholtz equation uh, and looked at how those plane waves behave under different contexts and circumstances. In this lecture, we'll look at the polarization uh, of those plane waves. So the learning objectives is for us to understand the relationship between the electric field, the magnetic field, and the direction of propagation, and which parameter denotes the polarization. Uh, we should also be able to perform polarization calculations, and th that will be done by employing uh, Jones formalism to describe uh, the fields and their transformation. But before we dive into the calculations themselves, we need to do a little bit of bookkeeping. Just like before when we introduced right-hand rule to define our cross product, uh, that is a choice that has been made uh, many years ago, uh, many hundreds of years ago, but it is imaginable where the opposite scenario would have hold true, where humans are left-handed and we would have chosen uh, the left hand to describe the cross product and then all of our equations would either um, change sign or the definition of currents would change from the flow of holes to the flow of electrons. But as it is, uh, the right hand rule is um, is the one that we use and when it comes to polarization there are also conventions that we can use and they pertain to the direction of propagation of uh, our plane wave and we can look at them from two different perspectives we can either look at the decreasing phase which um, becomes obvious from the argument of our exponentials as uh, j beta z minus j omega t or we can have the increasing phase which um, will have the opposite where we have j omega t minus j beta z. This relates to uh, looking at propagation from either of two perspectives. We can either look from the receiver, so a detector, um, and at which uh, case you'll, you place your hand at the detector and your point and, and you point your thumb towards the source or you can do the opposite and you can look at the source and place your hand there and look at the look with the thumb towards the receiver and both of those scenarios will have propagations along the thumb in different directions uh, but in both scenarios we'll use our right hand and so as you can see that will switch uh, many other things in terms of uh, uh, this component phi x phi y phi y and although this might not be might not seem very important when you are performing calculations it is very important that when you look up a reference material book that you know which convention that they use because it will influence uh, the transformations that we will see later on Since in this class we've been looking at electric field as defined like that with e to the negative j beta z, we notice that that follows uh, this definition of the electric field, the one with the increasing phase. So in this uh, inspection we will look at polarization in terms of increasing phase convention and looking at things from source perspective. As before, a plane wave is described in terms of a right-hand triplet. E cross H is equal to beta hat. And what this means is these three components, E, H, and beta, uh, describe the direct direction along which electric field oscillates for E, along which magnetic field oscillates for H, and the direction of propagation for the plane wave for beta hat. By convention, the pol polarization of light is given by E, and in the most general case, we can say that it has elliptical polarization. And what that means in terms of the increasing phase convention equation that we had on the last slide, we can make this statement, that there are no constraints on X and Y components. That means that EX and EY are independent, and so are PX and PY. That means this part, this part, and these two parts can be whatever you want them to be. However, we can also make a few distinctions for a few special cases. 
there's linear polarization, which uh, means that Vx minus Vy has to be zero. In other words, it, it means that Ex and Ey has to be in phase, but the magnitudes of Ex and Ey are independent. And then there is a circular polarization, which requires for the two um, components of Ex and Ey to be exactly pi over 2 out of phase of one another. And it also requires Ex magnitude to be equal to Ey magnitude. So now let's look at linear polarization more closely for a plane wave propagating along beta is equal to positive z direction. Electric field is an oscillating field that can be traced out from negative z to positive z. And the magnetic field has to be orthogonal to it, and for a linearly polarized light, um, this trace of E will be in one plane, and this trace of H will also be in one plane. And so when we move our E and H fields back to the initial position, and then we'll let them propagate, E and H uh, increase and decrease uh, as they uh, propagate through the media. And this was shown for E aligned with X, meaning linearly polarized light at zero degrees. We can also have linearly polarized light along 45 degrees. And that will just rotate both of the uh, E and H uh, together. And then we can similarly propagate them. And they will also decrease and increase, oscillate uh, along the prescribed paths. And we can denote that with this um, direction of oscillation for E and this uh, uh, polarization. Furthermore, we can rotate it some more. And now E is vertical. And once again, we can propagate that. And E and H fields will do exactly the same thing, but they will stay orthogonal to one another but their orientation with respect to the xy plane changes. And the vertical polarization means that E is equal to y hat, and that corresponds to polarized light at 90 degrees. And finally, another um, linear polarization of interest is 135 degrees, where pretty much the same thing happens. E and H oscillate, and our electrical uh, direction can be described with this vector, and that denotes a polarization at 135 degrees. We can also look at the circular polarization, and we'll once again consider a plane wave that's propagating along um, positive z direction. And first we can look at the right circular polarized light. And this is our electric field, and as you can see, it doesn't lie in a plane, but instead it rotates around uh, the z axis. When we look at the magnetic field, it does the same thing. It also rotates in the same uh, direction, but as we saw before, E and H are always perpendicular. And this one is called right circularly polarized light, sometimes referred to as RCP, because if you are to put your right hand right here and align uh, your thumb with the direction of propagation, it curls with your right hand. So once we uh, let this propagate, E and H, they rotate as the plane wave propagates in the positive Z direction. We can also have a left circular polarized light, sometimes referred to as LCP. And if we uh, position our E and H at the initial point and let them propagate, then what happens is if you put the thumb at your um, direction of propagation, then they follow the left uh, hand rather than the right hand. The interesting thing to note is that in order for us to have circular polarization, our x and y uh, directions or components of our electric field have to be 90 degrees out of phase with one another. And right circular polarized light has x plus jy, and left circular polarized light has x minus jy. So now let's look at some of the applications of polarization. 
and by exploiting our understanding of it we can match the polarization at the source and polarization at the receiver and by doing that we can enhance the successfulness of the transmission of our information. Vertical polarization is something that is used when the signal is desired to have as wide of a land coverage as possible and that is because um, a dipole, an oscillating charge, produces a donut shaped beam and the very very middle point of that uh, donut is the one that has the widest cross section and so what you're doing is you're aligning that with the entirety of your land and that is the largest swath that you have access to. However when you have too much vertical polarization sources you might have extra interference uh, between those uh, signals and that's why horizontal polarization uh, may be chosen because it will not interfere with the vertical polarization and by doing that you can actually get a better signal uh, because you will not attenuate uh, your reconstruction due to presence of other uh, nefarious sources. Or we can also look at circular polarization and in fact it's often used in satellite communication and other areas where the signal is likely to ro rotate. And that happens because of uh, atmosphere's ionosphere. They can exhibit a Faraday rotation, which adds a phase shift uh, or a delay to circular polarization rather than rotating the polarization like linear polarization would undergo. So whereas circular polarization doesn't change except for delay, a linear polarization could switch from horizontal to vertical. And we will see that in the example so in order to solve some of the polarization problems, we need to introduce Jones formalism. And what Jones formalism does is simply writes your electric field as a two vector that has two components, an X component and a Y component. And then it introduces a transformation matrix, J, where it's simply a two by two matrix that performs uh, some sort of a manipulation on X component in into X component out y component in into x component uh, out and so on for the other two um, combinations. So now let's consider horizontal and right circular to polarized light undergoing a rotation, something that might under might happen in satellite communication when going through atmosphere. A rotation we will define through Jones matrix uh, for a rotation uh, of theta and you can understand this as when theta is equal to 1 you have 1, 1, 0, 0. That's not that any matrix that means that it has no effect and when we apply uh, some rotation on the horizontal field and the right circular polarized field what we get is um, these components of X and Y uh, multiplying into the matrix. So this column will multiply with this row and it will multiply with this row. And similarly here we'll have this column multiply with this row and multiply with this row. That will produce these two expressions. And we can recognize that the rotated field will look like cosine theta sine theta uh, for the linear uh, polarization, but the right circular polar polarized light will look a little bit different. And what we can do is we can look at these two terms and recognize that they are very, very similar. And in fact, if we factor out j from the y component, we can have them both in terms of cosine theta minus j sine theta. And we can recognize that by Euler's identity to be e to the minus j theta. So what this means is that as we said before, uh, a Faraday rotation will not change the uh, polarization state. It's still 1 and j, but there is an extra added phase to both components of the electric field. So as we go along and if we intend to sense the signal uh, with a horizontally polarized antenna, then the antenna will have this Jones matrix. 
one zero zero zero. What this means is that it will only sense the horizontal polarization and nothing else. So now we can look at how this light, this rotated linear field and this rotated circular field behaves with this uh, linear polarizer. When we let these um, electric fields uh, interact with them, then we can do uh, the same thing where we multiply this column with this row and this row and this column with this row and this row. Once we do that, we get cosine theta uh, in the x component and zero in the y component for linear. And for the right circular, we get e to the negative j theta for x component and zero for y component. Finally, we're more interested in looking at the magnitude squared of our electric field because that resembles uh, intensity. And when we look at the two results that we got, we can realize that they're very, very different. One depends on theta and the other one does not. And that is something of an engineering trade-off because cosine squared theta will vary between zero and one. And if you can guarantee that your source and receiver are perfectly aligned, you will get this factor to be close to unity, which is good. But however, if you cannot guarantee the interference uh, that happens between the receiver and the source, then you might uh, be better off with using circular polarized light because that will at least ensure that you will always have one half uh, the intensity at the detector when it undergoes a particular set of transformations, those pertaining to rotation. So finally, uh, the tutorial topics, we will look at polarization transformations uh, associated with Jones formalism and we'll re-express polarizations into different components uh, Instead of X and Y, you can also talk about uh, right and left and see how re-expressing things might help with the math.